this should go together. It might need a little bit of tweaking, but I think we've broken the back of it. Plastic band around it. And I might put a tighter elastic band. I'll put my glasses on for this because if elastic bands break, they can severely damage your eyes. Having a look at that, these joints are nice and tight here and here. That's nice and tight, that's tight, and they're tight. Now, see if the top fits. Yeah, it's a bit tight. Yeah, it is. You can plane a little bit off the lid. I wouldn't plane too much off, but just a little bit and sand in these profiles here. And the other thing, which is a nice little trick to do, put my sunglasses on again. <laughs> put my sunglasses, ordinary glasses. Grab some, oh, about 100 grit or something like that. And in these slots here, bend your paper over and just go up and down there a few times. And what I'm tending to do is, is pull the paper up so it's actually taken this strong edge off the under of the top side. I'll do the same to the other one. This oak, by the way, is smelling absolutely beautiful. It's lovely having everything hanging up because it makes me want to put everything back. And at the end of the day, I've got a huge schmozzle around the place. All right, let's see how we go. The bottom's not a problem, it fits quite nicely. Rubber band on first, then the smaller one. A lot of pressure in these. We've got really nice tight corners all the way around. Now we'll see what happens after we sanded those slots out. And it goes in nicely. The only other thing I'm gonna do is where this joins in, I am gonna, a bit of 220 or something, just knock a little Aris off that so it's not sharp and the same where it goes on there we go it's got a nice little seal there but you can tell which end is which so I'm happy with that what I'm going to do now is glue it all together now I did say that there was some things you had to be aware of when you're using solid timber bases or solid timber tops for that matter and what it is, this is going to expand and contract for as long as the world spins. Because as the moisture is taken out of the air, the moisture will decrease in the timber and it will shrink. When the moisture comes back, it will absorb moisture and expand. So if we glued it all the way around and say it was pretty muggy weather or there was a lot of humidity in the air, this would be expanded when it dries out in the middle of summer and you haven't got the moisture in the air, it'll contract. And if it's held in by all four sides, it's gonna shrink, but it can't shrink towards the middle, so it's gonna split. So how we get around that, we just put a dab of glue in the center of the slot, just a dab, that's it, not much at all. Same in the other side or the other end, just a squirt. So in doing this, we've held this base in position. So it's not gonna rattle, it's not gonna move. And these two sides can contract and expand as the weather changes. So no glue in the long sides. But what we will do is put glue on the mitres. And you may be wondering why I didn't size these as I did with the chili and myrtle ones. There's two reasons. The first reason is I forgot. But the second reason is oak is pretty hard and it won't suck the glue up as much as the softer timbers will. 
But again, when you're just spreading it out, just be mindful that you don't get it in the slots where the sliding lid is going to go. All right, now I'll put this together. Start off with a big lackey band. That holds it in place. And then these really, really strong, these are 105s. Not worried about glue that comes out the outside. It's mainly the glue on the, the joints and if there's any on the inside. Just wipe. It's good to see a bit of squeeze out coming through because it means you have got a good mating surface there. Let's have a look visually down here to make sure everything lines up nicely. But what we'll do, we'll leave that set to dry and then when it's dried, We'll finish fitting the lid. Well, this is dry now, so we can take the elastic bands off. And we'll see if the lid fits. Now it can be, well, that's pretty good. It's just a little bit tight, so I'll do that with sandpaper. Grab some 100 grit, and just along that slot, remove the bit. Now, mitre joints by themselves aren't particularly strong. So what we do is put some little keys in. And keys, you've most likely seen a lot of larger boxes where they actually set a jig up on the table saw and run it down and you get a little 3mm or 8 inch slot of timber going diagonally. I don't like using large keys. I like using veneer, which is very, very thin, but still does the same job. Now I've got 12 little pieces of veneer and they're going to go into these slots. How I put them in, get a bit of glue and an artist's palette knife. I use this a lot for very fine gluing. Put a little dab of glue on the top and then just rub it in with the palette knife like that. And then a little bit of glue on both sides of the veneer and gently rock it backwards and forwards until it's home all the way. Now that's the bulk of them done. And the one I haven't done, or the ones I haven't done, are these faux ones here in the corner, and I'll show you how to do those. Slide the lid out, and put some glue on the open one, and that's how they look. And then on the top, basically you do the same thing. Squirt of glue. Now this should be dry. When you come to cut them off, you just go like this. Or well, the other thing you can do is... Cut them off with a pair of scissors. Now in here, where you've done it, very gently just pair that back and then with the lid and you can cut it and there it is now just to finish it off pop it back in the vise give it a nice sand all the way around knock off the edges clean up the bottom once you've done that the bottom's nice and clean all the sharp edges are taken out Put the two of them together and see how it looks. You can actually see he's got keys all the way around. Nice joins at the top. And it's quite presentable on the inside. And don't forget there's a raised panel on the bottom which is also a floating panel. So that's it. Another one down. That's the fourth box in the Marta B pencil case collection. So we started off with a very, very basic box. What I didn't like about that was holes here and large amount of end grain down here. Plus, I used an MDF lid. But, as I've said before, it's a great kids project, great starting out project, and we just glued the base on the bottom. The next one, we took it a little further with a half lap joint, which got rid of those holes that were in the previous box and we cut the end grain down. Still got the base on the bottom and I used a different 
lid, is perspex. The next one, what we did differently, was countersunk the base. And we did that by putting a rebate around the bottom of the box and slotting it in. I also introduced you to a raised panel. Now this raised panel was done with a hand plane and we glued the top of the slide onto that panel. What I didn't like about this one was we got rid of the end grain, which was terrific, but I didn't like seeing the sliding lid and I didn't like these gaps at either end. Also, I wasn't too keen on the bottom being a man-made substance. I wanted to put a solid timber one in there. So the one we've just completed, do you know what? There's nothing I don't like about this box. I really like it. We've got a lid that's profiled and it's a raised panel lid. That was done on the router. There's a raised panel on the bottom and that was done with a hand plane. It's a floating panel, so it's not glued in totally. We've got a glue dab there and a glue dab there and that'll allow it to expand and contract. We've got keys on the side which strengthen the mitre joint in itself and all solid timber lid and nicely finished on the inside. So you can see how with baby steps we've gone from a very, very basic box to one that anyone could be proud of or proud to own. Not that there's anything wrong with this if you're starting out. Believe me, we've got to start somewhere. But you can see just changing a little bit each time, you can get more and more involved in the work and become more uh, intricate in your construction process and also start to add design to what you're doing. Now the next one I'm going to do, I'm breaking right away from this style of box. I'm going to introduce you to some new techniques and different ways of doing things. I will be doing one that's very, very similar to this. Now this has a totally different slide arrangement on it. The lids are made in a different way and it's quite a nice box. But it's the precursor to this box, which is quite involved. But if you follow step by step all the boxes that we've done, this one you'll be able to do quite easily. So there we go. That's it for the moment. Steve's pulling the shed door down. Really looking forward to your company in the shed very, very soon. And until then, remember to keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it safe. Enjoy your woodwork. If you want to see the long extended version of this video, please check out my Patreon page. Become a patron. I would really appreciate your support and there's some benefits that go on with it. So next time, we'll be making this one. Until then, bye for now.